this is for you before i read it i said this one is for you it will not fail in your life while you are going out while you are coming in while you are moving from one city to the other you're moving from one country to the other anywhere you go the almighty will fulfill this in your life in jesus name if you are traveling and then your family is, you know, this way, you will come back and meet your family safe and secured in Jesus' name. Look at this. There shall no evil befall thee. You. There shall no evil befall you. Neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. Let somebody say, Amen. Amen. We're coming to point number two. In point number two, we're looking at Joseph's sanctification and servanthood in a godly way. Joseph's sanctification and servanthood in a godly way. We're looking at Genesis chapter 45, and we're reading from verse 5. Chapter 45, verse 5, Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near where is your uh, come near uh, sorry chapter 45 reading from verse 4 in verse 4 it said joseph said unto the brethren come near to me i pray you and they came near and said i am joseph your brother whom ye sold into egypt many times events separate between us and the originator of those events they, they had done something those brothers of joseph and that created a gap you don't want to see the person you have sold the person you have slandered the person you have caught down and the person you have you wish they were dead and you took the step to get rid of them you don't want to get near to them or see them but now here is joseph and here are the brothers of joseph and joseph said breach the gap you're far away forget what had happened come near unto me and he looked at them face to face you know sometimes when you've done something evil to a person and uh, the person comes to you even if he does not know the details of what you've done you look down because the evil that the person has done will want him to hide himself and so joseph said forget about that this is a sanctified person a holy person he doesn't have any grudge he doesn't have any animosity come near unto me i am joseph your brother whom you sold into egypt look at verse 5 in verse 5 now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves and you are saying can i ever forgive myself for what i did to him forgive yourself don't be grieved and don't be angry with yourselves and don't begin to accuse yourselves now judah you made this happen simeon this is your patch in the in the selling of days said joseph don't be grieved and don't be angry with yourselves now think about it if they didn't do what they did where would joseph have been they've taken away the coat of many colors but he had now the regalia and the the royal dress of a prime minister he lost nothing they did nothing that permanently injured him he said look at what the lord has done for me look at where i am today look at the dream that i had at that time and the dream is now fulfilled all the things they have done they are negligible there are things we can forget there are things that he should forget because look at the result now so he said now therefore be not grieved with yourselves or angry with yourselves that she sold me hither for god did send me god used your action 
God used your thoughts and God used everything you did and God sent me before you to preserve life. Let's look at chapter 47, reading from verse 12. Chapter 47, verse 12, and Joseph nourished his father and his brethren and all his father's household with bread according to their families. He nourished them joyfully, happily, heartily. He didn't have anything in his mind. Uh -huh. I'm giving you this now. I'm nourishing you. He knew it was God and God that had promoted him and provided for him. He made use of what God had provided to nourish the people of God. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the sanctified heart of the just. Number two, the selfless hard work of Joseph. And then number three, his sincere humility with joyfulness. Let's look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the sanctified heart of the just. In chapter 45, reading from verse 4, we've read that already. Look at Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. He did that to me. I'm still not seeing that. And then you cannot sleep at night because instead of meditating on the word of God, you're meditating on what he said, what she said. And then you're analyzing it. How could he say that about me? And he didn't mention your name really. And then you didn't hear from him directly. Somebody else told you that so and so of all people, this is what he said about you. You don't know whether that person is exaggerating or is adding to it. And then he says he criticizes you behind you. And you don't have any way of checking up. You didn't ask the man, okay, I'm going to check up from him. And if he asks me, how did I know? I will say, my friend, brother so-and-so, my friend, sister so-and-so told me that this is what you said about me. And then they'll say, uh-uh, don't mention my name. I just told you. Why do you gossip if you don't want your name to be mentioned? But the gossip has so gotten into you that you will not sleep at night, you'll not have clear thought, and you'll not be able to do what you ought to do because somebody said something and you cannot even verify or know what he had in mind or know his meaning. But the Lord is saying, Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. The interpretation is true love does not revenge. True love does not bear grudges. True love does not have any might to avenge ourselves. If you're throwing something at anybody directly because of what they have done, there's no true love there. But true love will forgive and forget and live your life. You know, our lives are tender and sensitive. And if you are thinking about this, it brings weight upon your mind. It brings confusion upon your mind. It hinders the straightforward prayer you ought to pray. It hinders your relationship with the brethren and relationship with the God of heaven. You will not avenge yourself. You will not bear any grudge against the children of thy people. We're looking at John chapter 17 verse 14. In John chapter 17 verse 14, I have given them thy word 
and the world has hated them because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. We know the attitude of the world. We know the reaction of the world. We know the grudges of the world. We know the fighting style of the world. We know the policies of the world. When we're Christians, the Lord said they are not of the world. They will not have the attitude, the disposition and the grudges and the avenging and the nursing of evil things like the world. They are not of the world even as I'm not of the world. And then he says in verse 17, he says sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is true. Sanctify them, purify them, purge them. When we're sanctified, all that, nothing of this and nothing of that, all that will clear away from our mind and actually that thing we're not seeing, apart from that it may push you to want to find a way to revenge, it will also make you fearful. Fearful, fearful of the people that you have uh, had about that they've done this, they've done that, and because of what they have done and because of what they have said, it creates fear in your heart. I don't know what I will do now that you know that man will also criticize me. I don't know what I wear, I will step my foot now, and that a woman will also say this and say that about me, and then it changes your personality. All those things you are bearing in your heart. If if you have been a person that is an extrovert and expressive and you are joyful and happy, all those things you are thinking about, everything will bring fear. It changes your personality and cuts you down. You are the one cutting yourself down now because of what you are thinking about. But it sanctifies us, it purifies us, and all those things get away from our mind. And then another thing may happen another time. You don't give interpretation to the new thing that you gave to the old thing. That's what spoils our lives, spoils our joy, and diminishes us. Because when something happens now, you recollect the criticism, you recollect all those things that you had thought about before, and your interpretation of every new thing that happens goes along with all those things you should have forgotten. The Lord will sanctify us truly and completely and thoroughly in Jesus' name. Look at First Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 22. Abstain from all appearance of evil. In verse 23, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 24, faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. He will do it. You know, what, what will our lives be if we're free from avenging, from revenging, from bearing grudges. And if we have that free flow of relationship with everybody around us and we're fully sanctified and we live our lives, we're free as the bird in the air is free and we're not hiding from this and hiding from that and hiding from the other one and we live a life that is above the wind that blows in the world, your life will become brighter. You will not say, I will not go there, so and so is there. I don't want to see her face. I will not go to the other place, so and so is there. I don't want to interact with him. You'll be free in the world that God has made. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And when the Lord sanctifies us and takes all those things away from our hearts, where we'll go where God wants us to go. I, I will go where God wants me to go. God bless you. Let's look at number two there. Number two there is a selfless hard work 
of Joseph. We're reading from chapter 41. I read him from verse 46. And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Pharaoh went, and sorry, and Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. He was going to gather the grain in the years of plenty and he went everywhere that province he went that uh, tribe he went and that locality he went and that local government he went he went everywhere and then in verse 47 verse 47 and in the seven plenteous years the earth brought forth in, uh, by hand by handfuls verse 48 in verse 48 and he gathered up he gathered up he gathered up he was able to manage the people he was able to organize the people he was able to train the people he was able to engage the people and all of them joined hands with him and he with them they were able to gather all the food of the seven years which were in the land of Egypt and laid up the food in the cities, the food of the field which was round about every city and laid he up in the same. Look at verse 49. In verse 49, and Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea very much until he left numbering for it was without number look at chapter 47 verse 14 chapter 47 verse 14 and joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of egypt and in the land of canaan for the corn which they bought and joseph brought the money into uh, the Pharaoh's house. Now think about Joseph. Number one, he was uh, quite industrious. And he went here, he went there by himself. Number two, he was dutiful. When they were selling uh, the corn, uh, he didn't say, you know, I've traveled so much, I've done so much, I've gone here and there. And uh, this is wears on the body. I need some rest. I need some relaxation. I need some refreshing. I need, I need some sleep. He was still there to sell the corn. Now, if he had not been there at the selling point, where all those foreigners who have come, if he delegated everything, I don't have all the strength to do all that, and then he uses the language that people use, I will not die. Just, you know, taking care of the people, distributing this, I will not die. If he was like that, he won't see his brothers. They will come and buy, and they will go. And they will come the second time again, and they will go. But he was there. He didn't know they were come. It's just being on duty. And that's what the Lord is calling us to. Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your strength, all your mind, because you don't know what, what, what you are going to do when you get to another place you are getting to. And then we read in verse 19. Look at verse 19. Wherefore shall we die before thine eyes? both we and our our land by us and our land for bread and we and our land will be will be servants unto pharaoh and give us seed and we that we may live and not die that the land be not desolate look at verse 20 in verse 20 we're told and joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh for Pharaoh not for himself for Pharaoh and you know the appear that you see what you think of yourself all that you know you're doing uh, is everything going to be shoveled onto Pharaoh how about yourself why don't you also keep some after all you know you can't predict Pharaoh is an unbeliever he may get angry tomorrow and then get you out of office what are you going to rely on that man was faithful that man was honest that's sanctification 
whatever people are going to do, however people are going to act, this is my place, my point of duty today. And I'm going to do everything because God is watching me. And so we're told that he bought everything for Pharaoh for because the famine prevailed over them. So the land became Pharaoh's. I pray that that same faithfulness the Lord will give to every one of us. We're coming to number three here. Number three is the sincere humility with joyfulness. Sincere humility with joyfulness. In uh, Genesis chapter 41, reading from verse 16. Genesis chapter 41, we're looking at verse 16. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, it is not in me. Interpretation, it is not in me. Revelation, it's not in me. The skill and the ability, it is not in me. And the ability to stand before you here and interpret the dream God has given you, it is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Look at verse 32. In verse 32, and for that the dream was dropped, doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God and God will shortly bring it to pass. In verse 33, it says, now therefore let Pharaoh look out a man. A man discreet and wise. He didn't say, uh, Pharaoh, well, I've interpreted your dream. And uh, nothing goes for nothing. Actually, I need to be cushioned. Where I'm coming from, the prison I was in, is how I got there. And now that I've given this interpretation, can you make me to do this and do that? God will place you where God will place you. He didn't campaign for himself. He was not a politician. There are some people that become politicians in the assembly. And they're asking for this and asking for that. They'll ask directly. They'll ask him directly. And if you don't understand their language of asking, they'll begin to react. And then you'll see that their zeal is going down. And their faithfulness is being eroded. But in the case of Joseph, this man was sincere in his humility and with joyfulness. And now therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Look at verse 38 in verse 38. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this is, a man whom the Spirit of God is a man whom the Spirit of God is. It's an action that will tell. If we have the Spirit of God, it's our joyfulness in the service of the Lord that will tell that the uh, Spirit of God is in us. But if we're doing the work of God and we're burdened and we're sorrowful, I was managing. I came today, but you know, Pastor, if I had my way, I wouldn't have come. It's like the whole world is on me. Somebody told a lie against me in the group, and he didn't even check up from me, and he disciplined me. I came out of that, and then uh, somebody said another thing. It's like nobody wants me in the group. They don't want me in the district. And what am I going to do? Now, not Joseph. A lot had happened. Much water had gone under the bridge. And yet, when he came before Pharaoh, he was an excited man, a joyful man, a happy man. And he interpreted the dream of, of, uh, of Pharaoh joyfully and happily we shall carry that kind of joy that kind of excitement that whatever is happening we know that god is on the throne for you i said for you 
So you are going to do something. All the things we've been thinking about that they said in the district, that they did in the group. And I, I cannot forget, you know, the group pastor called me and, and they set a committee on me. Can you think about that? And they were asking this and asking that. If you are thinking of that, you'll not be as happy, as excited, as joyful as uh, Joseph was. Forget that and bury all those things. Am I talking to somebody? When you bury all those things, then your life will be radiant in Jesus' name. And then Pharaoh said in verse 39, in verse 39, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. <laughs> Let me tell you this, the man did not have a uh, the WASC YX certificate. This man, they didn't allow him to finish school before they sold him out. All that he had is the Spirit of God and the help of God. Let me tell you, this man did not have a graduate certificate. This man, and Pharaoh did not ask, now tell me, I'm going to appoint you to an important job. What's the certificate? They forgot that. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, they'll forget what you don't have. They will remember what you have, and what you have will put you forth in Jesus' name. My brother there, I know the way you are thinking, the way you are talking to yourself inside, I could have done this, I could have done that, but I don't have the certificate tonight. I'm telling you, forget certificate. God will promote you. Yeah. My dear sister, I know the way you are talking, the way you are thinking. You know, I, I really have a great vision and I have a great, uh, you know, prospect. I would have been there, but I don't have this certificate. I am not a graduate. No, for, don't talk about that. Beyond what certificate would have lifted you, the hand of God will lift you up. If you just depend on God and have the Spirit of God in you, at the time, the gift of God, the Spirit of God will lift you up in Jesus' name. And look at verse, uh, look at verse 40. It says in verse 40, Thou shalt be over my house, and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Are you expecting promotion? Are you expecting the Lord will lift you up? The Lord will confirm it in your life. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, justified separation of saints from the godless world. We're looking at Genesis chapter 46, and we're reading from verse 33. And it shall come to pass when Pharaoh shall call you and shall say, What is your occupation? In verse 34, that ye shall say that servant's trade occupation has been about cattle from our youth even until now. Both we and also our fathers that, that ye may dwell in the land of Goshen for every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptians. We're looking at three things here. Number one, the separation of the shepherds in Goshen. Number two, the severance of his saints from the godless. Number three, the settling, the, the setting apart of spiritual sons unto God. Look at number one. Number one is the separation of the shepherds in Goshen. Look at chapter 43. Chapter 43 verse 32. In chapter 43 verse 32 and he said on for them by himself and for them by themselves for the Egyptians which for the, uh, from the, and for the Egyptians 
which did eat with him by themselves because because the egyptians might not eat bread with the hebrews for that is an abomination unto the egyptians they couldn't live together because the um, Egyptians were counted it an abomination, and also because they were shepherds, because the sh the sheep rearers and the shepherds were abomination unto the uh, people of Egypt. That's why the separation was there. And actually, if the Lord orchestrated it that way and planned it that way so that they will be separate. They will be different from the people of Egypt. Look at uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, reading from verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, uh, wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate says the Lord he wants us to be separate separate from the world separate from the filthy godless people of the world he wants us to be separate in business and separate in, uh, in marriage and separate in every way he says wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate says the Lord and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you in verse 18, and I will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. In James, reading from chapter 1, verse 26, James chapter 1, verse 26, if any man among you seem to be religious and bright, let not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Verse 27, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world, separate from the world look at number two here number two here the severance of his saints separation of his saints from the godless leviticus chapter 20 verse 26 leviticus 20 reading from verse 26 and you shall be holy unto me for i the lord am holy and have severed you separated you from other people that ye should be mine. The severance, it separates us. Why? Look at Jeremiah chapter 10 from verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Verse 2, it says, Thus says the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven for the heathen are dismayed at them and look at verse 3 the first part for the customs of the people are vain that's why we're separated from them their custom their tradition their way of life what they drink what they eat the festivals, their celebrations, all those things are vain and it doesn't want us to learn their ways. We're coming to number three here. Number three, the set, setting apart of spiritual sons unto God. Setting apart that we as children of God were separated from them were severed from them, were set apart from them. In Psalm 4, I'm looking at verse 3. Psalm 4, verse 3. But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call. That's what he wants. That's his will. He wants us set apart not to mingle with the people of the world and not to practice their practices look at verse 4 in verse 4 it says stand in all reverence and sin not commune with your own heart upon your bed and 
be still. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. In Second Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 19, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. I've been this seal. The Lord knows them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The people of the world dwell in iniquity. We cannot be like them or be with them or do what they do. They dwell in iniquity. But everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Verse 21, in verse 21, if a man therefore purge himself from this, it shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, sanctified, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Verse 22 tells us, flee also youthful laws but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. And the church said, Amen. Amen. I pray that everything we have learned today will be written upon the tables of our hearts. And God will single you out as a believer, a brother, a sister. And without mingling with the people of the world, He'll raise you up. Amen. He'll lift you up. Amen. And everything and everywhere you ought to be, God will take you there. Amen. God will take me there. Amen. With joy. Amen. With joy. Amen. With happiness. Amen. With excitement. Amen. I am going up. God will feel that in your life in Jesus' name. Rise up now and talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. You did it for Joseph so long ago and I know as I trust you, as I depend on you, and as I live for your glory, you will do it for me. Forget all those criticisms and all the things of the past. They said this, they did that and all that. Forget and live a life that is new and nothing tight on your legs and there's no fear of man and there's no fear of anything you are going up and the Lord confirm it in every life pray pray open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer The Lord has spoken to us to keep up with life's challenges. Humankind grapples with life's experiences. But a smile when victory is in sight affirms the soothing conquest strides. God will put a smile on your face. It's that time of the year to secure God's promises for your needed victory. I will see your blind eyes open. That cancer and that swelling, I will see it removed out of your body in Jesus' name. A smile this August. Even before the prayer, the power will operate in your life. Now's your time to rise and smile. And of course, when we come to the final, amen. To my right, to my left, and online. You will never be the same again in Jesus' name. An August visitor this August. He's the GCK Kavina, Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumuyi. He comes in triumphant power by Christ's redemption, ministering along with our guest music minister, Cornelius Cross. The sun will shine from the Sunshine State live from Anglican Grammar School on those states. South 
West Nigeria. That's the location for the next Global Crusade, 25th to 30th August 2022. 1600 hours GMT daily and 0700 hours GMT Sunday worship service. It's a GCK gift. Something from heaven. A gift from heaven. Grace from heaven. Power from heaven. Package just for you. Every man, every woman, every child, youth and young adults and broadcast to the world live via satellite, social media, radio and television. All the states of Nigeria, all the countries of Africa, America, Asia, Australia, Canada, Euro, Caribbeans, in the Arab world, everywhere, put a smile on every face. So join us. And let GCK take you higher as we triumph through Christ's redemptive hour. Every day, we fight to keep up with life's challenges. Humankind grapples with life's experiences. But a smile when victory is in sight. Affirms the soothing conquest strides. God will put a smile on your face. It's that time of... Our Father and our God, we're very grateful unto you for this evening. Very. Unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be. We are gathering together unto thee, to the Lord. Unto thee, unto the Lord, we are gathering together unto thee. Unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be. We are gathering together unto thee. Yes, we are gathering together unto thee. Lord, we are gathering together unto thee. For unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be. We are gathering together unto thee, Lord, tonight. We are gathering together unto thee, oh yes. We are gathering together unto thee. Unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be. We are gathering together unto thee, to the Lord. Together unto thee, unto the Lord, we are gathering together unto thee. Unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be. We are gathering together unto thee. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O Lord. 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 Oh, yes, we give you glory, Lord. Oh, yeah, we give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. Hosanna oh, in the highest. Let our King be lifted I. Oh, Zana, oh, oh, Zana, in the highest, let our King believe to thy, oh, Zana. On the way to Calvary went, for me, he went for me, he went for me. 
all the way to Calvary went for me. He died to set me free. Hallelujah. All the way to Calvary went for me. Jesus went for me. Yes, he went for me. All the way to Calvary went for me. He died to set me free. All the way to Calvary went for me. Jesus went for me. Yes, he died for me. All the way to Calvary he went for me. He died to set me free forever. Oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven, it is settled in heaven forever. Oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven, it is settled forever. And never, oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven, it is settled forever. Oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven, it is settled forever. Oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven, it is settled forever, forever. O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven, it is settled. Open my eyes, O oh Lord. Open my eyes, O oh Lord. Open my eyes, O oh Lord. I am ready to obey. I'm ready to obey. Open my eyes, Lord, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Open my eyes, oh Lord. Open my eyes tonight. I am ready to obey. I am ready to obey. Open my eyes, dear Lord, and open my heart, dear Lord. Open my eyes, O oh Lord, I am ready to obey. I am ready to obey. Open my heart, open my heart, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Open my heart, O oh Lord. Holy Spirit, open my heart, O oh Lord. I am ready to obey. I am ready to obey. I must dig a little deeper. Jesus word must be sweeter. I must dig a little deeper, deeper. Yes, oh yes. Jesus word must be sweeter. How we dig a little deeper, deeper yet. I must dig a little deeper. Jesus word must be sweeter. How we dig a little deeper, deeper yet, deeper yet. Jesus word must be sweeter. How we dig a little deeper, deeper yet. Oh, deep. I pray and higher every day and wise of blessed Lord in thy precious holy word, O oh Lord, O oh deep I yet I pray and I every day and wise of blessed Lord in thy precious holy word. Deeper, deeper in the love of Jesus, daily 
lets me go higher higher in the school of wisdom more of grace to know oh deep i yet i pray and i are every day and wise of oh blessed lord in thy precious holy word deeper deeper blessed holy spirit just take me deeper still till my life is only lost in jesus and his perfect will hold deep i yet i pray and i every day and why is a blessed lord in thy precious holy word deeper higher every day in jesus till all conflicts past find me conquer and in his own image perfected at last oh deep oh deep i yet i pray and higher every day and wise of oh blessed lord in thy precious holy word I want to know you more. I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more. I want to know you more and more. Lord, know you more. I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more. I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more. I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more. I want to know you more and more. I want to know you more i want to know you more and more i want to know you more i want to know you more and more i want to know you more i want to know you more and more i want to know you more i want to know you more and more i want to know you more i want to know you more and more i want to know you more i want to know you more and more more and more i want to know you more i want to know you more and more just a bit just a bit tease away god's word when his message comes to you there is but one thing to do just a bit just obey just obey just obey yeah. she's away god's way when his message comes to you there is both one thing to do just obey just obey something more than gold something more than gold the well of God in the heart of man is something more than gold, oh yeah, more than gold. Oh, the word of God in the heart of man is something more than gold. It is something more than gold and something more than silver. The spirit of God in the heart of man is something more than gold, more than gold. Something more than gold. The word of God in the heart of man is something more than gold. Something more than gold. Something more than silver. The word of God in the heart of man is something more than gold. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Something more than silver. The word of God in the heart of man is something more than gold. I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible is the word of God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I believe the Bible 
is the word of God. I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. He's the Son of God. Oh, yes, I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible. I believe the Bible is the Word of God. The B I B L E is good enough for me. I stand upon the promises of B I B L E. The B I B L E, it is good enough for me. And I stand upon the promises of B I B L E. Jesus will never fail. Never Never fail, never fail. Jesus we oh no, no, no. Yes, Jesus we never fail. Oh yes, Jesus we never fail. No, no, no. Yes, Jesus we never fail. You never fail, never fail. Jesus we never fail. No, no, no. Elijah is good enough for me. I stand upon the promises of B I B L E. The B I B L E is just good enough for me. I stand upon the promises of B I B L E. Jesus, we never fail, never fail, never fail. Jesus, we never fail. No, no, no. Then do we sweet what's so ever he says unto you is well fulfilled by example of what a life should be. God has a plan far above the mind of man. And whatsoever he says unto you, do it. Then do his will whatsoever he says unto you. His wealth fulfilled by example of what a life should be. God has a plan far above the mind of man. And whatsoever he says unto you, do it. Oh, yes. Whatsoever he said unto you, his word fulfilled by example of what a life should be. God has a plan far above the mind of man and whatsoever he says unto you, do it. Do it with whatsoever he says unto you, his wealth fulfilled by example of what a life should be. God has a plan far above the mind of man. And whatsoever he says unto you, do it. I am ready to obey thy word. I am ready to obey thy word. I am ready to obey the living word of God. I am ready to obey thy word, thy word. I am ready to obey thy word. I am ready to obey thy word. I am ready to obey obey the living word of God. I am ready to obey thy word. I am ready to obey thy word. Lord, I am ready to obey thy word. I am ready to obey the living word of God. Lord, I'm ready to obey thy word, thy word. Ready to obey thy word. I am ready to obey thy word. I am ready to obey the living word of God. I am ready to obey thy word, thy word. I am ready to obey thy word. I am ready to obey thy word. 
I am ready to obey the living word of God. I am ready to obey thy word in the word of God. There is salvation in the word of Jesus. There is power in the word of God. There is deliverance in the word of Jesus. There is power in the word of God. There is salvation in the word of God. There is power, oh yes, in the word of God. There is power in the word of Jesus. There is power. Oh yes, there is power, oh yes, in the word of Jesus, there is power. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. That I might not sin, that I might not sin, thy word have I hid in my heart, yes, in my heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. That I might not sin, that I might not sin, that word have I hid in my heart. Yes, the word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. That I might not see, that I might not see, thy word have I hid in my heart.